You can do something, you can do this. You can put all offended Christians in two categories. Did you know that? Category number one, those who have been genuine, genuinely mistreated. Category number two, those who think they've been mistreated. Now I'm not dealing with category number two. Category number two has inaccurate information or they have accurate information and they have discerned inaccurately. I don't wanna deal with that. I wanna deal with category number one. Those who've been genuinely mistreated. Now I wanna ask you a question, I want you to think this through. If you've been genuinely mistreated, do you have the right to be offended? Yes, you have the right to do anything. You have the right to go to hell and burn in a lake of fire and be eaten by worms forever and God will protect your right if that's what you wanna do. So yes, you have the right to be offended. But if you wanna walk in the presence of God, if you wanna walk in the blessing of God, you do not have the right to be offended. That's a good place to clap. The rest of you missed the spot right there. Seriously, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm so passionate about this right now because I'm so fed up with seeing people being taken down in life because of offense. I'm mad at it. I'm not mad at any of you. I'm mad at offense. I'm really mad at it. That's why I actually called Pastor Robinson. Can I come and preach it at the church? And he said, I'd love it because I am so fed up with what's going on today because the world and the church don't look any much different to me today because the church is getting so easily offended today just like the world gets so easily offended. And I'm like, we need help. We need the word of God to set us free. Amen. Listen, man, I was raised Catholic. Don't make me nervous and go quiet on me, okay? All right, so anyway, where was I? <laughs> okay. Do you have the right to be offended? No, not if you wanna walk with God. Oh, wait a minute, John. You just don't know what they did to me. Oh, come on, how many of you have ever heard somebody say that? You just don't know what they did to me. Let me see a show of hands. Come on. Do I pray for the rest of you for lying later or now? You just don't know what they did to me. Now, how many of you have ever said that? Don't put your hands up. You know what I say to that person when they say that to me? You don't know what they did to me? I say, no, you don't know what you did to Jesus. An offended Christian is a person that has forgotten what they've been forgiven of. Do I need to say it again? An offended believer is someone who had never even realized or had, has forgotten what they have been forgiven of. What we need to realize is that when Adam sinned against God, God the Father could have looked at God the Son and said, you know what, they chose the devil over us, they committed high treason against us. Let them all go to hell and burn with the devil forever. Let's go over and create another universe and create somebody who really loves us. And he would have been perfectly just because you know what our just reward was? Every single one of us was to burn in a lake of fire forever and ever and ever. That's what we deserved. You know, what, you know what the big problem is? We've categorized sins in the church. We have, we have the big ones, adultery, murder, witchcraft, uh, uh, stealing. Then we have what we call weaknesses, strife, unforgiveness, gossip, <laughs> gossip. You know what Proverbs 6 says? These six things the Lord hates and the seventh is an abomination. Do you know adultery is not in that list? I am not justifying adultery. The Bible says you practice it, you'll not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm not talking. But, but you know what I find interesting? You know what the seventh one on that list is that God says is an abomination? Those who sow discord among brothers. Gossip. So this is what I wanna say. Treat gossip the way you treat adultery, you'll probably get free. But if you see it as a weakness, boy, it's getting quieter in here. Treat unforgiveness the way you treat murder and you'll probably be free. You know what's amazing? I can show you three times more scriptures in the gospels of Jesus saying that a person that refuses to forgive will not inherit the kingdom of God than I can a murderer. Three times. You pray it every day in the Lord's prayer, forgive us for our trespasses, the way we've forgiven those who have trespassed against us. Do you want God to forgive you the way you've forgiven those people that have hurt you? Well, the truth is, 
That's the way you will be forgiven because God has placed his love in our heart and we have the ability to forgive just like Jesus did when he hung on the cross and said, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. Isn't that good news?